tonight's news focus. Flying the Jalur Gemilang should not be limited to National Month. Sexual harassment, amendments to law necessary, organisations need to be accountable. Dato Sri Lee visits location of fire incident in Riyam Miri. Good evening. The Malaysian flag, the Jalur Gemilang, should be flown at all times and not just confined to the National Month. The Minister of Women, Family and Community Development, Dr. Sri Nancy Shukri, said that raising the Malaysian flag is a sign of loyalty to the country, a form of patriotism that should be instilled in everyone. Pengibaran Jalur Gemilang tidak seharusnya terhad kepada bulan kebangsaan sahaja. Tetapi perlu diteruskan pada setiap masa, terutama sekali semasa peristiwa dan perayaan rasmi negara. Namun, pastikan bendera yang dikibarkan dalam keadaan yang baik dan tidak lusuh sebagai tanda penghormatan. Apa, apa, apakah lagi kalau bendera Malaysia pastikan yang tidak terbalik? Ya? She said this while officiating the Jiwa Community Madani program at the Santubong Parliamentary level at Maidin Pajajaya on Sunday. Therefore, the Santubong MP urged the people of Sarawak to fly the Malaysian flag at every premise, village, longhouse, and even on vehicles to showcase unity and support for the country's sovereignty. She also encouraged the continued support of the One House, One Jaloga Milang, One R, One JG campaign to celebrate National Month and Malaysia Day. At the highlight of the event, Dr. Sri Nancy presented the NS Santubong Parliament Excellence Incentive to outstanding students of the Sijo Tinggi Pelajaran Malaysia, STPM and Sijo Pelajaran Malaysia, SPM, as well as to Malaysian Games Sukma athletes from Santubong who successfully contributed medals to the Sarawak contingent. During the same function, Dr. Sri Nancy highlighted that amendment of the law against sexual harassment should be done especially within an organization to ensure the rights of the individual can be fully protected. She said that the law related to sexual harassment is now only between individuals and not for organizations. Tapi kalau kita nak mengenalkan undang-undang kepada organisasi, kita perlu membuat pindaan kepada undang-undang yang mana kita dapat bukti bahawa organisasi itu tidak berlaku, melakukan apa-apa untuk membantu kes ini. The Santubong Member of Parliament added that such measures involving organisations need to be implemented in order to reduce dependency on victims to make reports while organisations do not take any action. So now, bagi saya sebagai Menteri Bertanggungjawab, kita, saya akan minta supaya mereka mengkaji ini dan supaya dipindah, tambahkan apa nama, uh, provision itu dalam. She clarified that the law amendment will be done under the Anti-Sexual Harassment Act 2022 to strengthen the set law to be fair to victims of sexual harassment in an organisation, whether male or female. Sarawak Transport Minister Atuk Sri Lee Kim Shin has visited the location of the fire incident at Taman Futi Riam on Friday. The fire incident, which occurred on the morning of 30 May, had caused several damage to six terrace houses in the same story. Although not on location at the time, Adol Sri Lee immediately directed his service centre team to provide assistance through the team led by Councillor Jeffrey Pang and Captain Ji Ki Hyung to come down on the ground to assist and obtain more information about the fire victims. Additionally, the Sarawak Welfare Department has also been contacted to review the situation and make a comprehensive assessment of the damage to the six victim families. During the set visit, a member from the Sanadin Assembly Mand also handed a cash aid amounting to 46,900 ringgit to six victim families for the purpose of purchasing daily clothes, school clothes, school equipment, sleeping equipment, kitchen equipment and help with building materials. Atul Sri Lee Kim Shin hopes that such aid can be used well to help the families involved, especially in the context of repairing their homes. The Jalaja Agenda National Malaysia Sehat ANMS campaign continues to drive the transformation of the nation's healthcare system from patient care to healthcare. 
Deputy Minister of Transport, Datuk Hasbi Habibullah, explained that the aim is to empower the public to take steps towards practicing self-care, including raising awareness about the health screenings for those aged 18 and above. He expressed strong support for the National Healthy Malaysia Agenda, introduced by the Ministry of Health, KKM, as it plays a vital role in promoting health literacy and fostering a culture of healthy living and environmental cleanliness. He thus urged all government departments and agencies, both federal and state, private agencies, non-governmental organizations, and the entire Limbang community to support this agenda. He said this during the launch of the Jalaja ANMS for Limbang District 2024 held at Dewan Suwara Limbang on Saturday. He added that the ANMS also aims to ensure Malaysians lead healthier lives by adopting practices such as regular physical activity, healthy eating, stress management, not smoking, and maintaining environmental cleanliness. Furthermore, the Limbang MP mentioned that KKM is also running the National Health Screening Initiative, which is another initiative encouraging Malaysians to undergo health screenings to identify risks and detect non-communicable diseases early. The Jordania Sebekas Unit Team emerged as champions of the futsal competition held in conjunction with the Sebekas Sports Carnival Kasus Talian Branch 2024 on Saturday. The sweet success was achieved after defeating its challenger, the Lian Lawud A, Sabakas unit with a score of 4 against 1 in the final match. Meanwhile, the Talian Lawud B, Sabakas unit team succeeded in defeating the Muka Town Sabakas unit team for third place with a score of 7 against 2. The kick-off ceremony for the final match and presentation of prizes was perfected by an officer from the N57 Talian Service Centre, J. Karam, representing Talian Assemblyman Royston Valentine at the Talian Village Futsal Court on Saturday. When contacted by the media, Royston said this competition aims to build relationships among Talian units while strengthening unity. He explained that the nature of volunteerism in organising community activities and so on to become a platform for building self-identity and forming authentic leadership, especially among the youth. And that's the English edition with me, Philip Dio. More news can be found in our official portal, ukas.sarawak.gov.my and social media platforms, including Facebook and YouTube. We end the bulletin today with the Premier's vision for eco-friendly transport 2030. Hashtag Saluran Informasi Rakyat. Have a good night. VC Premier 2030 Eco-Friendly Transport Pengangkutan lestari merujuk kepada pelepasan karbon rendah dan sifar, cekap tenaga, medium pengangkutan yang berpatutan termasuk kenderaan bahan api elektrik dan alternatif selain bahan api domestik. Transit Aliran Automasi ART dijangkakan menjadi sistem transit awam pertama di dunia menggunakan bahan api berkuasa sel yang akan bergerak di atas laluan khas. ART menjadi pusat projek sistem pengangkutan Bandar Kuching, KUTS yang bermula dengan fasa 1 meliputi jarak 70km di tiga laluan, laluan biru, laluan merah dan laluan hijau di Greater Kuching. Perkhidmatan Bas Hidrogen dan Elektrik Bas hidrogen diperkenalkan pada 2019, manakala bas elektrik pada 2021 di dalam sistem pengangkutan awam bandar di Kuching. Bas-bas hidrogen dan elektrik ini juga alternatif hijau untuk para penumpang yang mempunyai kesedaran alam sekitar di samping memberi kemudahan kepada para penumpang harian. Stesen pengecasan kenderaan elektrik bakal dipasang di seluruh Sarawak bagi mengurangkan pelepasan karbon dan menggalakkan lebih ramai rakyat Sarawak untuk memiliki kenderaan elektrik. Setakat Ogos 2022, terdapat 20 stesen pengecasan awam di Kuching. Dengan kepimpinan premier yang berwawasan, Sarawak akan menjadi peneraju di peringkat nasional malah ke peringkat global di dalam pelaksanaan pengangkutan mesra alam. Visi Premier, Sarawak Maju, 20, 30.